everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Google Announces New Keyword Match Types and Three Things You Need to Know. My name is Michelle, and I'm just here to get things started before I pass things off to today's presenter. So before we get into the content today, some of you may be familiar with WordStream. You know us for all of our content, things like this, breaking news coming from Google. Um, but for a little bit more insight as to who WordStream is and what we do, we're a search marketing software provider. We've got a lot of those free resources like I talked about, and we've also got some paid tools that can really easily help you grow your AdWords, Bing, and Facebook campaigns. One of a kind, all in one software platform. Um, Mark is going to talk a little bit throughout um, about how our software kind of relates to the content that we're talking about today. So definitely following the webinar, look out for your follow-up email with a lot more information about WordStream and how you can learn more about how we can help you. Um, and without further ado, uh, getting back to that content for the slides. So we are going to be distributing the slide deck as well as the recording of today's presentation following the conclusion. You'll get that via email, so keep an eye out for that and feel free to share it along. We also encourage you to be social, so you can join in on Twitter. You see Mark's handle right there. And then last but not least, we will save time for question and answers at the end. Um, Mark is really here to help you all and your specific needs. So don't be shy. Submit those questions, and we'll be sure to get to them. And my favorite part of the webinar is getting to introduce my good friend, Mark. So Mark is a senior data scientist here at WordStream. He has over five years in paid search experience. Um, and in 2016, he was voted the 14th most influential PPC expert. So you all are in great hands learning about this breaking news from Google um, and how you can really get ahead of the curve and make sure your accounts are prepared to succeed. So without further ado, I will pass it off to Mark. Thanks, Michelle. You know, my favorite part of all of these webinars is you introducing me as well. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, that and Q&A. So please, throw, I'm a real person, please throw in questions in that chat box. I saved time at the end of this so that we can talk. This is a, a, mostly a conversation anyways. So please, throw questions in there. And so, uh, I'm really excited to be here. Had five years of paid search experience. A lot of stuff going up and down throughout those five years. Um, definitely changes like this can be big, it can change a lot of things going on in people's accounts. So I was excited for exactly two things. Two things got me out of bed today. And that the first one, the more important of which, eh, more important, we'll let, let that sit in the air. But the first one is, of course, this webinar. I'm really excited that you're all here, so thank you all for being here. Um, but the second thing that really got me out of bed, the, that got me really excited for today in particular, is that today begins the NHL playoffs. Um, I am based in Boston, and I am thrilled to have the Boston Bruins finally, finally make the playoffs uh, this year. It's been a couple of years since we've made it. So my sincere apologies to any of our guests from Ottawa today, um, but know the fact that I'm thinking right now about two things, exact match keywords, and about my Boston Bruins. So as I was creating this webinar, I would be foolish to try to separate the two because that's where my mind is right now. And so as I'm, as I'm excited, and as all of you should be excited about the NHL playoffs, I was thinking of how I grew up learning search. And a little bit about me is before I worked at WordStream. I actually worked for ESPN and specifically covered the NHL. So I almost can't separate the two concepts in my mind. So when I talk about how, how we approached match types in the past um, and how I train my staff here in terms of how they learn match types when they first come on, I teach them the exact match keywords the very first thing. And it's very likely that when you first started and when you, whether that was five years ago like me, or whether or not that was a month and a half ago, you likely learned exact match keywords the very same way. Where your exact match keyword, if you had the exact match Bruin Senators tickets, that keyword would serve exclusively to the exact search term. So whenever someone searched for 
ruin senators' tickets, that keyword would serve an ad. The search exactly matches the keyword. And that's always been what exact match is about. That's the simple case. That's what we were all taught from the very beginning. But that's actually not an accurate description of how exact match works anymore. So to go back a month, Google made this announcement on St. Patrick's Day. So that was March 19th, I want to say. We're just under a month since they made this change. And Google made this announcement that keywords aren't, exact match keywords aren't going to match out like that. That you're going to continue to get that traffic, but exact match keywords are suddenly now going to reach out to a bunch more different searches. And I want to detail all of those changes because these changes are going to be significant to people who have relied on those keywords in the past. And some of them, these changes are kind of uncontroversial. The first one and the least controversial I'll say is that these exact match keywords are going to serve an ad whenever that search term matches the words, but with different capitalization. So here, the capital, the Bruin Senators tickets um, is going to match out to the lowercase version of that. And I don't anticipate this having a lot of grave effects for people. If anything, you know, we go in and we all search in different cases, be it capital, be it with our caps lock, be it sentence case, what have you. Um, this is, in fact, just going to get us to reach out to more searches for people who are effectively learning, searching for the same thing, but might not be as grammatical as our keywords are. So there's seldom consequence to this one. But another change that these exact match keywords are going to reach out to include when special characters or non-standard characters are added into the search. So if I had my Bruin Senators tickets, I could just as easily serve an ad to someone who's searching for Bruins at Senators tickets. And so this is slightly a different type of search. That if you think about the semantics or what, what that specifically means with the special character, that is saying that I am looking for that hockey game, but played in Ottawa. And when we're talking about me, based in Boston, likely doing these searches no less than 100 times a day because that's where my mind is right now, that is a different type of product or a different type of, of offer than the one indicated by my search. And that these small semantic changes can mean the difference of me being able to arrive at someone's site and buy those tickets down at the TD Garden, watch my Bruins play as senators, versus someone who might be looking to travel to Ottawa. Um, that those are two entirely different types of people. And this is going to play into how our keywords match out to people of different intent. So as I talk about these special changes throughout the webinar, specifically think to how this can play out differently in your accounts. So the special characters that are going to be included in exact match include the period, the comma, the semicolon, a number of punctuation, the at symbol, different currency values. So someone who is searching for uh, Bruins tickets, $100 versus 100 euro or 100 pounds, that does have different meaning to us. That if I were, had a specific price point that I'm trying to get people in at, different currency values could mean that I'm selling a different product or trying to sell different valued product to people. Accent marks, we know that Google is going to begin to disregard accent marks. So you're going to see uh, people searching in related or, or uh, foreign languages, but could potentially match out to your ads here. Same thing with non-English characters. Um, think of the Cyrillic alphabet. Think of the Arabic alphabet. Think of the Mandarin alphabet that any kind of intro, so if someone were to write some Mandarin characters or some Cyrillic characters before they wrote this English search term, 
that would also match out here. So we run into that issue where we're beginning to attract different kinds of people who are searching for different things on our exact match keywords. And so have some consideration for exactly how this traffic is going to come to your site. Another change that's included in exact match keywords are common misspellings. So Google is actually going to include uh, misspellings of our search for these exact match terms. And so here I have the example of someone misspelling the word senators. In this particular example, and in most examples, I don't anticipate this playing out negatively. In fact, previously, you know, going in thinking of all the, the misspellings that someone could have of your brand name or of your product or what have you, that, that is creating a bunch of different exact match keywords with relatively low reach. And this is going to automatically match out to all those possible misspellings or all those common misspellings of our keywords. So that will extend the reach of our keywords, but you do have to begin to consider, well, what is the intent behind someone who is searching for my brand name but doesn't know how to spell my brand? Um, I know that we bid on the brand name for WordStream, and we are all too happy to pay for people who are looking at our products or service, our blog, our content, everything Michelle was talking about, but someone who is less familiar with our brand uh, someone who types in word steam or word scream or something like that, um, you know, they could be looking for any number of different things there that they might have just heard of us tangentially, might want to try to learn a little bit about what this PPC thing is all about, um, or they're looking for a new, a new game on the app store or whatever, that like we do get a lot of misspellings of our brand name to our site that don't necessarily always know what we do as a company. And so you're going to begin to see that these misspellings are going to appear through your exact match keywords as well, which can be less than ideal. So here, we're also going to see um, search terms that are grammatic variants match out to our exact match keywords. So here I have the example of someone searching for Bruin Senator's tickets, or sorry, Bruin Senator ticket being served in an ad for the keyword Bruin Senator tickets. And so effectively, we're going to begin to start serving ads to the singulars, the plural version of our keywords. This also has some implications to it, that someone who is searching for Bruin Senator's tickets implies to me that they're likely going to buy multiple tickets, that that click is more valuable to me just by the fact that they're going to buy more product from me. Someone who is looking to buy tickets is likely looking to buy in minimum two tickets, versus someone who is specifically searching for one ticket, that might be a less valuable search for me. The opposite may also hold true for your company. Um, thinking of word streaming, for example, I know that when people who are searching for paid search agencies are searching, they're, look, they're specifically looking to compare around and they're looking to search, click on several ads and compare them with each other. Whereas someone, we see that people who are searching for a paid search agency, they're more likely to actually just click on one or two ads and convert on those. So think about how the singular or the plural version of your keywords implies intent here. And begin to think of those strategies slightly separately, knowing the fact that you're going to begin to attract both of them to your site. A bigger change that's coming through with these exact match changes is the fact that these exact match keywords are going to show an ad when the search includes the same words even if in a different order. So here, if I have the keyword Bruin Senators tickets, I could now also serve ads to the tickets Bruin Senator searchers, as well as Senators Bruins tickets. 
And on a lot of cases, this isn't going to be that much of a problem. But consider semantics here. That, okay, maybe the first search, tickets Bruin Senators, that although not fully English or not fully the word order that I think is most natural to people, if people search that way, that still sounds like a relevant search to me. However, if order matters to you, this could be disastrous. Senators Bruins tickets. If you think of how we, uh, in the US, we generally denote um, the away team, home team, and that's how we announce games. So Senators Bruins would mean that the Senators are playing at the Bruins in Boston versus Bruin Senators suggests that the Bruins are playing at the Senators in Ottawa. So where word order matters here tells a different story for the type of tickets this person is trying to buy. Um, that definitely plays into this particular search where you're looking to buy tickets to one game and that that word order means something in terms of which game you're looking to buy tickets to. But also think about other kinds of keywords out there. Um, my fiance, he just uh, passed his architecture licensing exam, which makes him a licensed architect. And so people who are searching for a licensed architect are looking to hire him versus him, he spent a lot of time searching for architecture license exams. And so that's a huge difference in terms of who is searching for what and what exactly they're searching for. Um, that I don't anticipate someone who is searching for a architecture license is also going to be looking to hire a licensed architect and vice versa. So think about your top keywords and how word order might change the meaning of what people are searching for there. Next up in this change is the fact that this is also that these changes are also going to include searches that add in additional function keywords. And Google kind of defines function keywords as prepositions, articles, and conjunctions. And so if it's probably been a while for you since you've had to go through these. I know for me, I learned grammar in like the fifth or sixth grade and haven't had to go back a whole lot into it since I got in paid search. But so prepositions are your ofs, ins, arounds, near, those, those kinds of words. Articles are the, an, a, uh, um, and conjunctions are ands, buts, and ors. So we see the fact that the Bruin Senator's Tickets exact match keyword could now ser serve an ad for someone who's searching for tickets for the Bruins or with a functional keyword, Bruins at Senators Tickets. And that addition of the word at now allows me to serve an ad to that, that query. And that again might have implications for how I that type of traffic I'm getting to my site, that the inclusion of for the Bruin tickets doesn't sound like it's going to affect the search intent behind that, but Bruins at Senators tells me a little bit more about that context. It's obviously a slightly different search than someone who might be looking to get Boston tickets. And that semantic addition does tell us additional context of the kinds of products, of kinds of ads that we want to be serving to these searches. And so these will automatically populate for those searches now, but also Google is free to ignore them if we include them in our keywords. So if we had the keyword senators at Bruins saying that I wanted to serve traffic for people who are looking for this game in Boston, I could now serve traffic to this search, Bruin Senators tickets, which removes the app here. So it gives Google a lot of free reign to either add or remove words from my, from my search terms, from my exact match keywords. 
as well as a number of other uh, changes in terms of how my exact match keywords match out to queries at large. A lot of them are kind of inconspicuous. Some of them can get really semantic and change the meaning of that search effectively. So we're entering this new world in terms of how keywords match out to a search term. We all learned that exact match keywords are going to show an ad exact whenever that search exactly matches the keyword. That was the safe way to doing paid search in the past was that you would have your exact match keywords and they would only serve ads to those exact searches. But now we see all these new additions differences in case will be able to serve an ad for that exact match. The addition of those non-standard characters, that at, those dollar signs, those euro signs, yen signs, um, commas, periods, etc. Misspellings of the keyword are going to all automatically populate as well as the singular plural version of that keyword, um, grammatic variants of that, words that ending in ing, IED, um, any kind of relation in terms of the adjective to the noun version, Google is going to make that change automatically for us. Um, the big two, though, are the addition of those words out of order. So the difference between architecture license and license architect, and the addition or removal of those functional words. So those are the inclusion of the word the, or of, or and, or or, that Google is going to automatically match or, at, or exact match keywords out to those searches as well. So we run into this situation where exact match keywords, as we have them in our account, are no longer exactly matching the search. And so for a lot of us who have grown up doing things like this, this is a big change for us that we do have to, we previously may have had different strategies for how we managed all of these variants, but now all of these keywords reach the same audience. And I know the change is fairly young, that this all was announced on St. Patrick's Day. So we're just under a month in terms of the announcement even occurring and that the change is ramping up and it really rolled out in April. And so what we've seen so far is that although Google said that this would be a fairly unnoticeable change for most people, that we really shouldn't have anything to worry about, that this was just going to increase our reach, and the number they gave us was it would increase our reach by 2%, that 2% of searches would be affected. But I'm increasingly skeptical of that number from Google. Google obviously has a lot of incentive to serve more ads to more searches, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. That looking across the word stream client base, we've got several thousand clients in that right now. So looking across basically 9,000 clients right now, um, we see that this month, there's been an increase of 8% of impressions that are coming from these exact match keywords. And they're all these new close variant searches. So those are words out of order, those are misspellings, those are the singular plurals, those are those functional keywords added. So 8% of impressions coming from those now, which are brand new. 10% increase in clicks um, from these near variant exact match keywords. So people are definitely seeing these ads, they're noticing these changes in their metrics in their account, and they're definitely getting more traffic to their site as a result of showing more ads here. But not only are they getting more traffic, but as with everything in paid search, increased reach and increased traffic also means an increased cost for advertisers. What we've seen is so far this month, an 11% increase in costs from all of this new traffic. And so that's kind of a big shift for you if you're an advertiser and you've previously, likely you came up with a budget that you want to spend in paid search for April. And now you're seeing an 11% increase in cost from these exact match keywords just because they're reaching out to more search terms. A lot of people are going to be happy about this. A lot more are probably going to be upset. And so 
with that, we really do need to have a conversation of what are we going to do about all these changes. And the very first thing, as with any kind of change, we likely went in, we created a bunch of keywords, we included exact match keywords in our account because they served a particular purpose. Now that these exact match keywords do something different, we should really reconsider what the purpose of these keywords are. And I would suggest that you should really think about how you feel about this. Um, there are some clients when I informed them of the change that they were very happy about this change, that it used to be a drag to have to go in and add in different uh, misspellings of your keyword, the singular, the plural, the words out of order, uh, the the words with at and the and in or around or near or nearby are all of these small prepositional phrases having to throw them in a new set of keywords and then duplicate that with the next set of functional keywords and do all that. that they had to go in and it took a lot of time, it took a lot of effort managing large sets of keywords. And this change allows them to no longer have to manage all of that and gets them that increased reach and those increased clicks. If this is you and you are very happy about this change, I would suggest that maybe exact match keywords are too prohibitive for you in the first place. That if you're not losing sleep over this and you welcome the additional traffic, then maybe this is a good sign that broad or broad modified keywords would do well in your account. Similarly, there are other search ways to show up on the SERP um, with shopping ads or dynamic search ads that allow you to get highly relevant traffic to your site without managing all these thousands of keywords. And this is a real thing. We all have tons of things that we're all trying to do with our lives. I know I'm trying to get to a Bruins game later today if I can. Um, but if you've got to juggle your SEO and your paid search and your email marketing and your event marketing and your print budget and all of this stuff and you're trying to do everything, then you're not gonna wanna create thousands of keywords and this solution might be beautiful for you. And so consider broad modified match keywords. And broad modified match is basically going to play in the very same way that the new exact match plays out where it's not going to be concerned about word order or the addition of those new keywords. In fact, it will automatically allow us to insert other keywords that are less functional keywords in here. So the modified broad match of Bruin Senator tickets would allow us to serve an ad to someone who is searching for Bruin Senator's playoff tickets as well, with the word playoff in between, or would allow us to add in additional function words like versus or hockey to the beginning of that search term and we'd still be able to reach that traffic and so it's going to play the very same way that the new exact match keywords reach out to new traffic but allows us to reach even more searches so if this is something you're excited about consider playing around with the broad modified match the broad match keywords are great if you just want to go all in um, if you're currently really excited about this and you're just like Thank God I have to do less keyword research. Broad match keywords are a great way to get a lot of traffic to your site. Again, they're going to match out whenever that search is contextually similar. So if listening to me for the last um, 20 minutes so far has been too much semantic mincing and you're just sick of me parsing information at you, this is a great way around all that semantic hurdles. And so broad match, it's going to show whenever that search is contextually similar in any way. So someone who is searching for Bruin Senators tickets, um, that broad match keyword Bruin Senators tickets will serve an ad to anyone searching for NHL playoff tickets or Boston versus Ottawa tickets. Um, that, that's another way to rewrite that. But for most of us, um, most of us created exact match keywords because we liked having control over all of this, that we want to just get that small set of traffic. And so if word order matters to you, and you know that there is a difference between architecture license and licensed architect, or that there's a difference between Bruins 
Ottawa or Ottawa Bruins. That word order does matter to your account. You do want to be can still consider how you're using exact match keywords. And perhaps it may be time now that these exact match keywords don't respect word order for you to adopt something like phrase match keywords. And so phrase match keywords, you know, people used to use these all the time when I get started in paid search five years ago, but then they stopped using them a couple of years ago when broad modified came out. Phrase match keywords might have a huge revival because of this. Um, we see that the phrase match keywords are going to serve an ad whenever someone searches for a query that contains the phrase exactly. And this will maintain that word order so that the phrase match of Bruin Senators tickets will only serve an ad when those words appear in that order. It will allow for the addition of new words at the beginning or the end of that search to not be in that keyword, but at least maintains the word order. So if there's a difference between Bruin Senators and Senators Bruins, you can get that correct order within phrase match. Same kind of idea with um, architecture license and licensed architect, that we can put those as phrase match keywords, and then I don't need to worry about those two words appearing out of order and potentially matching to an incorrect or an irrelevant type of search. And so there are lots of different ways to do this. You can go through your account and create a whole big list of new keywords, basically export your account to Excel, look through all of that, go in, create all these keywords as phrase match, or if you want to try modify broad or broad match, you can go in and you can create all of them one at a time within the AdWords interface. Um, depending on the size of your account, that might take minutes or it might take days. Um, happily, WordStream customers, I know there are a good number of you on the webinar as well. If you're a WordStream customer, you can go through the keywords tab and you can automatic, you can select which keywords or you can select all the keywords in your account that meet some kind of criteria or an ad group or something like that. And you can automatically just change their match type right within the WordStream software. So just make sure looking at the keyword tab, you select the keywords that you want to change. It can be all, it can be none. Um, and choose the new match type you want to make them. And that's going to make manage, managing this transition away from exact a little bit easier towards either phrase match if you want more control over word order or modify broad or broad if you're interested in scaling this kind of traffic. And so the second thing you're going to want to do is that as you get new traffic to your site, all of this different semantic traffic to your, type, your site on different search terms, you're going to want to proactively add new negative keywords. So we can go through and well in advance, just go through the exercise that I had went through with the Spruin Senators tickets keyword. Go through the top keywords in your account and consider the semantic variations that these exact match keywords could reach out to. And begin to make some kind of determinants on, hey, does that make as much sense for my account or not? And talking with you guys earlier, I mentioned the fact that like, okay, someone who's searching for Bruins at Senators or Bruins at Symbol Senators tickets, um, suggest that they're looking for a different product. And if I'm only trying to sell in Boston, I'm likely not going to want to include this type of traffic. And I'd wanna add those types of search terms as negatives and I can do that well in advance of the first time anyone ever searches for this. Other things, we might see are more of a judgment call. So we talked about word order, how there might be a difference depending on where you're searching um, between Bruin Senators and Senators Bruins or License Architect, Architect or License. If word order matters here, if Senators Bruins is a completely different search for you, you might need to go and add that as a negative keyword. But if you consider them one and the same, that's fine too. Very similarly, you're gonna to wanna to look through. Consider the singular, the plural matches. Do people who are looking for Bruin Senators tickets, is that a less valuable search for you? 
Do you want to not get that traffic? Do you not want to pay to get that traffic to your site? If so, that might be a negative match, the negative keyword for you to add. And so we can continue to add negative keywords to all of this stuff, and Google is still going to respect our negative keywords, even with the exact match changes. So if there's something that we really don't like coming to our site, we can still go in if we strictly don't want to see this phrase or this search term come to our site, we can still prevent that with negative keywords. And so what's likely going to happen is yes, please review all of your top keywords and consider the possibilities of bad traffic coming to your site. But I wish I could say that I'm going to prevent all bad traffic from coming to my site before any of it comes. I know that's not true. You're gonna to wanna to remain diligent in terms of the search terms that are coming to your site. You can review this in AdWords just by going, um, hitting the insights and clicking into the report that shows all of your search terms, right, with an AdWords, and then write those keywords down that you don't like and add them as negatives in the negative tab, and then go into Bing and do the same thing for Bing. Um, Wordstream customers, please, this should be a lot easier for you. Just navigate to Query Stream. Query Stream is going to give you the exact same data. It's going to allow you to select which search terms as they come through you're not interested in. So if you're not interested in the AP, APA editor or the copy edit search query, even though it's that, that exact host variant match, you can go in and add negatives for those terms. Similarly, if there's just one word that you're not interested in that search query, so if it's that word resume that I'm not interested in, you can hover your mouse right over that one word it will highlight it, and you're able to add that individual word as a negative keyword here. So consider that proactively add negatives, but what you're going to need to do, and there's no way around this one, you're still going to want to look extra diligently at your negative keywords over the next coming months as Google continues to roll out these changes. And finally, now that we have all of these different matches, within our exact match. This is an extra good opportunity to look at removing duplicate keywords, particularly because it's likely that we're going to have a new duplicate keywords. And so it's very likely when you create your exact match keywords, you create them with one search term in mind. So the, key, the exact match Bruins tickets would only serve to the Bruins ticket search. The tickets Bruins keyword would serve to tickets Bruins searches tickets for the Bruins serve to tickets for the Bruins, right? Very simple stuff. And this is likely the logic you use to create your exact match keywords originally. But with this change, because all of these are so semantically similar, that word order no matter, no longer matters, and that the for, the, the functional words no longer matter, prepositions, articles, et cetera, all of these keywords are now effectively competing against one another. And so there's enough competition on the SERP that the last thing you need to do is have your keywords stepping on each other's toes and increasing your own prices. So now that all of these keywords effectively match up to the same searches, they're effectively the same keyword, Google's not going to prevent, Google's not gonna prevent you from competing against yourself. You need to go through and you need to start looking for all of these duplicate keywords in your account. Once you remove them, that should in fact help you out in terms of how you manage your account. Not only is it gonna reduce the number of keywords you have to manage, but it's also gonna prevent your keywords from competing against themselves. And we see the fact that right now in our portfolio, looking across um, our, our clients' accounts right now, that because of these changes, 18% of people's exact match keywords on our portfolio are effectively replaced or effectively duplicates of existing keywords in their account right now. So this isn't like a small change to a small number of keywords. A number of people had these exact match keywords out of order or with the and or for, in or near or nearby or et cetera that we no longer need to have those keywords in. So this is actually a really good opportunity for us to kind of, you know, shed some winter weight from our uh, accounts here. That 18% of our keywords are now suddenly duplicate keywords.
keywords in our account. Now, removing duplicate keywords can be frustrating, particularly these things that aren't exactly in the order, that you could write a script um, that the function you're looking for to write a script is an n-gram function, um, import a library of articles and prepositions and functional keywords, and n-gram that script against your keyword base. Um, and you are very welcome to talk to your coder about exactly what all of that means. Luckily, uh, Wordstream customers, we've already had that conversation with our product team. Um, and our product includes the positive goods alert. You guys will see this in your 20 minute work week every single Monday. And so this alert is gonna bring up all these duplicate keywords, be they exact match duplicate keywords or broad match duplicate keywords, um, if they're out of order, if they're in order, et cetera, et cetera. And it's gonna bring the duplicates to your attention. So if I've got two of the exact same keyword, but they're in different order, or they have that functional word in here, it will just highlight the fact that I have multiple of them, and it'll let me choose which ones I wanna pause, if any. And then I hit apply, and then all my duplicate keywords are gone, and that saves me a whole lot of time. So highly encourage it, and I wish you guys the best of luck with the transition. Um, so Michelle, I believe that you had a couple of offers, and then we had a Q&A we wanted to hop into. Absolutely. So um, Mark just did a really great job of kind of highlighting for anyone on the line today who is a Wordstream customer how you can log into your account and, and really, really quickly get through a lot of these kind of bigger changes. Um, for those of you online who are not a Wordstream customer, that's okay, we forgive you. Um, <laughs> but we do have a special offer for you and you can hop on the line with one of our many experts on staff here like Mark, tons of really great people who would be happy to kind of walk you through your account and show you how you can really easily make these changes um, using our, our software. So while I get to the q and A. I'm just gonna launch um, that poll. You can go ahead and choose right now if you would like to kind of get one of those walkthroughs from one of our experts here on staff. So take your time um, choosing whether you'd like that or not, and I'm gonna get to some of the questions. So Mark, questions came in fast and furious. Oh um, people are worried about the other kind of match types. Um, all right, uh, so I'm gonna just take it kind of one by one down the list. So do you foresee any changes happening to broad or, or, or phrase match types? Um, so broad, broad is your catch-all. Um, it's going to continue to be your catch-all. It's going to get you a lot of traffic. Exactly what kind of traffic continues to be broad. Um, and I don't have a better explanation to that. It's what Google considers to be broad. So it's going to continue to get you a whole bunch of traffic there. So broad is, broad is safe in the sense that it's still chaotic. Um, Modified broad, it still follows the same logic here. So there's no changes to modified broad at all. So it's just going to require those individual words to be in the search term, although not necessarily in that order. What isn't changing at all is phrase match. And so phrase match is kind of the safety net, what I'd say to all of this. That phrase match is still going to respect word order and it's not going to change around anything in terms of how it matched up to keywords now. Um, phrase match a couple of years ago did include some of these changes. It included the, the misspellings, uh, the cases, and the uh, grammatic variants, so the singular plural stuff. It's not 100% pure, but it, relative to a lot of these other changes, it's still it's still the safe one. Awesome. Okay, a lot of people are worried or a little bit hesitant here. What to do with exact match negative? Oh, oh, this is actually pretty nice. Um, so none of the changes to negative keywords. Um, exact match negative keywords here are still going to play the exact same role, and it's going to prevent us from serving for that one query. So if I don't want to serve for Boston Bruins ticket, the singular version of that. I can still go in, I can add in that one exact match negative. It's not going to serve out to the plurals or anything else. Um, 
Google isn't going to change anything in terms of the negative keywords, in large part because Google doesn't want you to have, like they, do, they don't want you to serve fewer ads. Google still wants more money here, so your negative keywords aren't going to reach out to more, more terms. So you're still safe in terms of your negative strategy for today. Awesome. A couple questions came in um, regarding Bing. Is Bing going to adopt Google's uh, exact match philosophy, do you foresee? Uh, so right now, Bing has adopted some of them. Um, Bing includes the grammatic variants. So that's the singulars, the plurals, ing's, ed, the noun adjective version of words. Um, as well as the misspellings, but it still respects word order and it doesn't add the functional keywords in. So Bing has made some changes here, but they haven't announced that they're making large sweeping changes. We do typically, you know, every single time Google makes a change that's unpopular like this, Bing is proud and says like, well, we're never gonna do that. Um, they said that with enhanced campaigns in 2013, they said it that they weren't going to retire standard text ads um, when Google announced that they were going to retire standard text ads. And Google and Bing has always said, like, no, we're not going to do that, or we're not going to do that immediately. And then sometimes six months down the road or a year down the road, they ultimately end up doing it anyways. Um, I would expect the same kind of path from Bing, although I don't have confirmation on that. Awesome. Okay, we got a couple of um, a little bit more specific questions. Um, one in particular, hyphens. How are they treated in the new exact match? I believe hyphens are considered a symbol. Um, so Google does disregard hyphens specifically. Great. What I will say is that they won't do it if like you've got like an uh, barcode number, an ISBN number, or a SKU number that has hyphens. One thing Google isn't changing is the order of any numbers. So if you've got uh, hyphenated numbers in there, you don't need to worry about Google reordering those numbers because Google does respect the fact that numbers out of order are a completely different meaning. <laughs> awesome. Um, another bit of a kind of a specific question here in regards to exact matches and location. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, New York, New York State, NY, how is this change affecting that? I believe that how Google handles it is it handles abbreviations. So New York and New York City would continue to match out to NY and NYC because those are recognizable symbol uh, abbreviations by Google and Google will allow me to abbreviate NY in my ads, it will allow me to abbreviate NYC in my ads, um, so that it can apply the same logic to common things like states uh, in terms of making that match there. What I don't anticipate changing is, um, I don't see that Google is going to start like creating misleading abbreviations for that. So I don't see the fact of like New York City is going to reach if I if my keyword was New York City, it's not going to reach out to NY. Gotcha. Um, this question, just to double check. So this change is live and in everybody's account, right? Yes, it is currently live in all English and Spanish speaking accounts. And by the end of the year, it will be in all languages. And there's no uh, love it or hate it. There's no opt-in or opt-out. It's just happening. Awesome. OK, so got time for just one more question here. Um, so it's a, it's a good one. So it seems like a couple people are, are a little bit worried right now how to rearrange their, their keywords and stuff, which thankfully, your really great tips should help them feel better. But what about the benefits of these changes? Is, is, is there any benefit here? So I think that the real benefit here is for small, medium businesses. Um, that there are, like, I know that I have a number of local clients 
um, that would previously have to include a lot of different ads or a lot of different keywords in their account. That if you're thinking about like a hotel in Copley Square, you would have to have the keyword Copley Square Hotel, Hotel Copley Square, Copley Square, uh, Hotel in Copley Square, Hotel near Copley Square, Hotel at Copley Square, like all of this stuff where you were basically playing this like long semantic game. And at the end of the day, like you would miss hotel a uh, copley square or a misspelling of copley or um hotel nearby copley square or something like that where like unless you got super excited about every semantic variant of of your search you, you creating hundreds of keywords for the same type of traffic and so i imagine that a lot of those local businesses are going to be happy by the fact that I no longer have to worry about every preposition or every functional keyword under the word world, and that they are going to get a lot of quality traffic from this stuff. Um, but I think that where that falls apart is for more niche advertisers. That like the example I have, and this is just because like I'm currently engaged to an architect, is the license architect architecture license. Um, that that is a whole different world by just changing around a word or if i'm looking at prepositions around at or in and i'm not at or in a location but that does change a whole lot um so i do think that the niche the smaller guys trying to carve out a niche with paid search are the ones who are sweating a whole lot whereas more generic local guys might might benefit from this awesome well, Mark, thank you so much, as always, for your insight and for your great advice. Thank um, you for having me. Of course. And to everybody who is on the line with us, like I said at the start, you will be getting an email um, shortly, and that will have a recording of today's presentation, as well as the webinar deck, so you can feel free to review the content, share it with, with your teammates. Um, and as always, Worship is a resource for you, so head to our website. Um, the email will be coming from Mark, so you can definitely reach out to him with any questions um, and take up any, any of our, our staff here. We're all happy to help. Um, we hope you have a great day, and we hope to see you on a future WordStream webinar. Thanks, guys.